all the evidence that we have from around the world is that you're not going to change teacher behavior in terms of transfer of training, right? Unless you engage in some form of uh, uh, um, understanding of key principles, some sort of theory, right? Some sort of theory of action, right? Some sort of understanding of what the range of cooperative group work, groups look, look like. What does inductive teaching look like? What does a monomic actually look like? Do we understand the principles there, right? And we can, we can have the, we can have the, the PowerPoints, uh, and that's important in terms of giving a cognitive map. But unless we actually see it <coughs> demonstrated, we're not really going to get a, a clear view of it. There's, there's one way of understanding it cognitively, but unless we actually see it, we're not going to actually get a sense of the whole, right? And whether that requires me to come in and teach a little mini lesson inductively or we see it through video, doesn't really matter, right? But we need to see it, right? We then need to, to actually then practice that in some sort of non-threatening situation. And again, I've said this to you before, but you know, if you want me to run a workshop on this, I'll get your teachers to come bringing their lesson plans, right? And we'll get them to rewrite the lesson plan using inductive teaching, using cooperative group work, and then we'll get on tables them actually teaching it to each other, right? So then they got, they got the this, they got the heart, they actually do the practice, and then we'll give them some feedback, right? Because some, some of it is easy, some, some, some of it's a bit tricky, right? So you do that two or three times, you've got the, the teachers understand the behavior, right? But we can't, but it's difficult to transfer that into classroom practice unless you get the conditions going on inside the, inside the school, right? And that's about coaching, that's about sort of uh, setting up the space, that's about the, the, the triads and so on and so forth, all right? So the hard message here is that unless we actually design our staff development with this, 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 that, and that, right? All the evidence is you're not going to sustain the transfer of training, yeah? And, and fair dues to John Munro, you know, what I, what, what's impressive about John's stuff is that he understands this stuff and he's built this into the designs that, that he's actually working, working with you on. But it's tough, you know, this is, this is really where the rubber hits the road because without this, we're, we're really going to struggle to get impact on, on, on kids' learning. And then the final one, which I think is, you know, still pretty, pretty challenging, is the fourth slide, is that how do you actually take this to scale inside your, inside your school? And this is a, a slide that's taken from Richard Elmore's work. And um, I've... Uh, I said I would change one word on this. I haven't done it yet. Um, uh, I deliberately have not sort of translated this from the American, but um, uh, because it, the, the, his language is actually quite stark, but it sort of adds a bit of edge to what we're talking about. He's saying that really as a principle, if you want to get sort of, when he talks about large scale improvement, he's talking about improvement across a school, right? These are the sorts of things you need, you need to do. Maintain a tight instructional focus sustained over time. All right, we've talked about that, but you know, there's a the tightness and the focus is 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 important. Those words are important here, and how we move up the progression in terms of pedagogy that I was talking about relates here as well. That we routinize accountability for practice and performance in face-to-face -face relationships. So what we're doing is that we're holding we are holding colleagues accountable. For their professional, for their professional practice, right? So the focus on, of our leadership, your accountability to me as a leader, is the exercise of your professional practice. In fact, what we're doing is we're holding everybody, we as a group of colleagues, hold each other accountable for the quality of our professional practice and our con contribution to that dialogue, right? Now that really, you know, alters the culture of the school, isn't it, right? So that you know, I have a respons you know, it, I have a responsibility to be consistent and following the protocols that, that we that we establish. Uh, we reduce isolation and open practice up to direct observation, analysis, and this word, he's wrong here. That's the wrong word. It is critique. All right, it's not criticism. It is critique. All right, because we don't want to be personally critical. Right, but we do want to actually be able. To actually engage in a, you know, in a critique, uh, 
in, in a supportive dis discussion. And that will occasionally say, uh, occasionally mean, well, David, did you notice you weren't sort of quite pacey enough after, after lunch? We, you know, uh, where we just really engage in, in the, the stuff which makes a difference. Exercise differential treatment based on performance and capacity, not on volunteerism. So we go whole school. This is, this is an expectation, an entitlement for, ev for, for everybody. And as colleagues begin to become increasingly competent, right, we just give them more and more space to innovate, right? 